In my city, in my time, there were many people that were more qualified than me. They had better age in Bible schools. Many of them have all kinds of advantage. advantage. Many of them were preachers' children. In fact, their parents have a church for them to inherit yet again. They ran away and left the church. They are in their palace. There were people that have all kinds of advantage yet again. It's a challenge. Because in the days of the Bible, color does not matter. It's ordination that matters. There is an ordination of men. There is an ordination of God. A man can ordain you to this work. God ordain you to this own work. And without the ordination of God, the ordination of men become a burden. If I ordain you to do a work that grace is not supplied unto you to do it, you suffer. And that is the reason why many people are wondering why are they suffering? Because you have not assessed the grace of God supplied for you in the area of labor. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. That grace was not in vain in that I labor. So the apportionment of the grace supplied for him to execute the plan and the purposes of God upon the face of the earth was as a result of a supply of a kind of grace. That he be an apostle unto the Gentiles. The same grace that was upon Peter to be an apostle unto the Jews is the same at working in Paul in a different kind of dynamics to become an apostle unto the Gentiles. And if God had tried to use Paul to convert the Jews, he may not. And if God tried to use Peter to convert the Gentiles, he may not. So there was a dynamics in the days of revival. That the uniqueness and the differentiating realities are portioned in the spirit of men was their advantage to conquer many lands and territory. No wonder, a time came, there were too many among their numbers and persecution struck them. And all of them scattered apart. And the Bible says, and Thomas went to India. So everybody went to prove his apostolic calling and ordination. Although they were together with the Lord. And the Bible said this man turned the whole city upside down. A day is coming when we are going to be too much for our own normal primary conclave. So we must be able to scatter abroad. In that day, can we send you? Where can we send you to? In the days of revival, what you think you know may fail you. But those are the days where you beckon upon Zion. So that a sword will be given unto you to wield. The Bible spoke about a woman named Deborah in the days of her rising. He said, in that day, the highways and the byways were unoccupied. And suddenly an eye, Deborah rose a mother in Israel. And she occupied a vacancy that has been there. And from that very moment, she began to judge because it was expected there has to be a judge in Israel. But nobody had the stature, the qualification. I don't know which military school she went to. I don't know whether she had been admitted in NDA. She went through Tama 1, Tama 2. But there was a decoration in the spirit. It was reckoned unto us that her place of infrastructural development was the palm tree. That thing you are doing in the secret that nobody sees is actually a preparation for a public display. In the days of Samson, he knew that his strength was from a supply of the Holy Ghost. It's the same way in the days of David. He knew that in the day that Goliath boasted, the entire army of Israel will lose their skill. All the generals that have been trained according to war, when they saw the strength of Goliath, they ran away. In that day, the arm of the flesh filled men and we are looking for the arm of the Lord. Those are the days that we are about to come into. It's the day of revival. In the day